You've worked with square tile maps in Godot before, but you're just not satisfied with them. You want more sides. You want the bestagons, so tile with hexagons. Today, we're going to be doing a dive into how hexagon and half offset square tile maps work. We're going to take a look at the specific options that impact them, how the various layouts work, and some gotchas when working with 3D tiles with them. Hi, my name's Brian, I'm a software developer, and I've been turning that love of software development into building educational tutorials to help people like you build the games that you want. Let's get started. So what are hexagonal tile layouts? Well, we're familiar with our square and isometric tile layouts from previous videos. Uh, square tiles we would see in games like chess, and isometric tile layouts we would see in games like Starcraft or Age of Empires. The hexagonal layout gives us, uh, instead of having four neighboring tiles, gives us six neighboring tiles. Typically, we would do this with uh, a six-sided tile, a hexagon, uh, because they tile perfectly. But we can get away with using four-sided tiles and just offsetting every second row. Uh, and we're going to take a look at that briefly as well. Now, changing from a tile layout that has four neighboring tiles to a layout that has six neighboring tiles has some benefits and it has some drawbacks when it comes to your character's movement. So if we're talking about moving from one particular position to a neighboring tile, this gives us a more diverse uh, number of movement styles that we can take. Uh, we can move up and down, we've got some diagonal movement, but this is one of the drawbacks as well is moving straight left or straight right in this particular layout, we can't really do that. So it means that we would have to kind of zigzag a little bit in order to get there. Uh, that being said, we don't run into this issue that we would see in square tile layouts, where if you wanted to move diagonally, you either need to go left then right, and that's mo two movement, or you are moving faster on the diagonal. And so this is a problem that we see with uh, chess where you can have the bishop or a diagonal moving piece move a lot further in terms of total linear distance. And so the hexagonal layout can help uh, alleviate some of those problems. But again, you don't get this one-to-one -one substitution. Uh, expanding from four to six again means that two of your cardinal directions, you're not going to be able to move directly to, you're going to need to take two steps rather than taking one. This is the same for both the hexagonal layout as well as the half offset square layout. It's the same approach, just with two different uh, styles of tile, uh, whether or not you want to draw them as squares or draw them as hexes. Everything that we're talking about today will apply to both the half offset square and the hexagon tile shape. For sake of simplicity, I'm just going to stick with the hexagon layout, but know that whenever I'm referring to uh, the hexagon tile shape, this also applies to the half offset square in terms of general functionality and how you would reference various neighboring tiles and whatnot. The first challenge you might run into is how to even draw a perfect hexagon. That is one where all of the angles are exactly the same and one where all of the side lengths are exactly the same. If you're used to square tiles or isometric tiles, you've probably gotten used to that all of your dimensions are going to be perfect round numbers. Uh, and that's not the case for hexagons. Because of how the math works out, we're going to be dealing with irrational numbers. And so our goal is to try and find a ratio that we can work with where things are going to be close enough that you're not going to notice. Let's take this singular tile just as a reference point here. So if I want a tile where the sides are length n, where n is an arbitrary number, and have that be consistent across all of them, the total width of the entire hexagon is going to be 2n. We can take this and we can put the line straight across here, and a second one there and it will fit perfectly. The total height of this is actually going to be the root of 3n. So uh, you can see there that we're immediately getting into irrational numbers and like the numbers are not going to be perfectly round. Um, what I've found is a good ratio is about 30 by 26. So if the length of this here, so our value of n is 15, we get a total width of 30 for that. And the total height ends up being 25.98 something or so, um, which is close enough. Now we're dealing with like one 500th of a pixel. We're close enough that users aren't going to notice, and the, the math is all going to work out relatively close to one another. So if you're looking for a ratio to work with, uh, 30 pixels wide, 26 pixels tall, 
that seems to be a good ratio to work with. And in fact, that's similar to what I'm working with for these tiles. These are 64 pixels wide and by 58 pixels tall. Not quite a exact multiple of those, but it's close enough that you as a user aren't going to notice the difference. Keep in mind that that math really only matters if you're drawing a perfect hexagon. If you want to stretch or squeeze your hexagon in one of the dimensions to have a style that's customized to your liking, by all means go for it. That really only matters when you are working with kind of a perfect shaped hexagon there. Whatever you're doing, you want to be able to split the hexagon straight down the middle and have it be perfectly balanced on both sides. So that's something to keep in mind. It becomes important when you're doing the actual drawing of your assets, but if you just want to be able to go through the exercises now to be able to understand how to work with hexagon tile maps, feel free to use the resources that are in the description. I've got links to the assets that I use here so you can experiment without having to have them drawn your own in advance. Okay, let's get started. In order to work with tile maps, we need a tile map layer. I've created a Node 2D scene here. I've just called it hexagonal tiles. And I'm going to press Control A on Windows or Command A on Mac, and I'm going to create a new tile map layer. Remember that we're not working with tile maps anymore. These are going to be deprecated in a future version of Godot. All of our tile map work we are doing now should be with tile map layers. Our tile map layer doesn't have a tile set to start with. Remember that a tile set is the collection of the individual tiles that you could be working with. Then the tile map itself is how you decide to paint them on your scene. So we're going to go over here onto the right. We're going to click the empty here on tile set and click create new tile set. We don't notice anything immediately except for a new tab down here in the bottom where it says tile set and we can click this. And we have our tile sources here on our left hand side. And when we click on one of those, when we create it, we're going to have more information that's going to fill up the center pane here. Let's first do the initial setup for our tile set because we haven't done that yet. Clicking on the tile set over here on the right hand side, you can see that the default is set to square and we do need to change this. We're also going to need our, to change our tile size. Let's first do our tile size. The assets that I'm working with here are going to be 64 pixels wide by 58 pixels tall. The other thing that we need to change here is this tile shape. Now again, remember that if you're working with square tiles but still want them in a hexagonal layout, you can use this half offset square, but we're working with hexagonal tiles, so we can select this hexagon tile shape here. Whenever we do this, we get a change to the tile layout and the tile offset access inputs here. They now become available for us to work with. Let's start first with this tile offset access one. If we zoom out our display here, we can see that there's a little bit of a grid here that's displaying. And this corresponds to both the tile size, but also this tile offset axis. What this means is uh, in order for tiles to properly nest so that there's no gaps anywhere, we need to shift our tiles in one dimension or another in order for them to get to show up properly. And so this standard layout here is referred to as, as a horizontal offset. So if we take a look at this one particular row, we've got a particular layout here where it's repeating and we are shifting the X axis left or right in order to have the next row perfectly nest in. Uh, this also has an impact on whether or not the top of your tile is pointy or is it net, is flat. Is it uh, an edge or is it a corner? In this case, the assets that I'm providing are flat on top. And so we need to keep that in mind when we're, we're working with this. That does mean that as a necessity, our offset axis needs to be vertical. And so if we change this to a vertical offset, you're going to notice that the tops of all of our hexagons go flat and we're shifting each subsequent column up or down in order for it to perfectly, uh, perfectly tile. We can't do much with our tile map without having a tile set to work with. So let's quickly create one of those just so we have some reference material. If we hop down to our bottom, we're going to click on this tile set tab here. If you don't have this, make sure that you've clicked on the tile map layer node in your scene tree. We're going to come down to the bottom here, click the plus sign, and we're going to add a new atlas. And then you can go into the assets folder and bring in this hex tiles.png. Because we've defined our tile size in advance, we don't need to worry about manually selecting our tiles. And this is going to ask if it, we want it to automatically create tiles in the atlas. And we can select yes here. As a result, we're getting eight tiles that we can work with here. 
The other configuration option that we got access to is this tile layout option, which defaults to stacked. This is a way of translating the XY coordinates that are used in order to kind of internally track how a tile map is laid out and then converts that into what we visually see. And this becomes important if you are primarily worrying about um, interacting with your tile map via code, which we will cover in another video. Um, but in general, you can set this once and you can leave it and then never have to worry about it again. But it is important that you set it once and then you kind of don't change it. Pick whatever layout makes sense for you in your head. Um, and after that, you don't have to worry about it. What I've got here is some example code that uh, puts 16 tiles down and we will kind of walk through the tile layouts here so you can get a rough idea for how they end up laying themselves out. Let's take a look at the various tile layouts that we can get. So what I've done here is I've just tiled out 16 tiles in a uh, four by four grid. And so we can see how they end up displaying. And so this is the default stacked layout here where we are zigzagging bottom up, bottom up. Stack to offset instead of going down for each particular second tile instead moves up. The stairs right moves directly across from one, two, three, four, and so it doesn't stagger until you move down to the next row. But we can see that it's consistently moving to the right. And so one axis is kind of moving from your top left to your bottom right. Stairs down takes a similar approach where again, one axis is moving from the top left to the bottom right, but we are no longer zigzagging any way. We're kind of slowly, consistently stepping down. And you can see some similarities here between those previous ones and then the diamond right and diamond down. So diamond right, again, moving up and to the right rather than going downwards. And a similar approach for diamond down, instead of having the five directly underneath the one for that, we are instead working off of both edge axes there. Now again, ultimately, which one you pick is entirely up to you. Some layouts may make more sense in your head versus others. What is important is that you stick with that and you don't change it uh, because the moment you change it, everything kind of gets mixed up and it's not going to look correct for you. Now at this point, everything is pretty much consistent between hexagonal tile layouts versus the square or isometric ones. We still have all of the existing functionality that we would have in our tile set definitions, we can select various items, we can change the margins and the separation, um, we've got our physics layers and navigation layers, and all of this is totally configurable just as it would be for any other ones. Uh, one gotcha that I want to point out is when you're dealing with kind of 3D looking tiles. So these are totally flat tiles that we're, we've been working with. Let me just paint a bunch here and we can uh, have an example to work off of. If I'm working with only flat tiles, everything is fine here. You can paint the tiles however you want. They're gonna work just fine. If, however, I am bringing in a 3D tile, one that has like a, a height to it, we're gonna notice some issues here. So if I just drop a few in here, we can see that some of these tiles are kind of getting cut off. Like if we look here, this tile is getting cut off and that doesn't make any sense. Why is that occurring? Well, it comes down to how the tile map render is displaying the tiles and in what order. What this means here is that this 3D tile is getting painted before this number three tile. And so the number three tile is painting over top of it. And so there's this order that these tiles are getting displayed in. It's even worse here with this particular one where both the six and the four are overlapping this one. So if we want to get around this, what we need to do is we need to enable Y sort origin. And this exists in our tile map layer here itself. And under ordering, we can select Y sort enable, and we're going to see the moment we check this off, everything magically corrects itself. Now I have another video that describes what's going on here, but the, the, sim the simplified version is that uh, we've now told the rendering engine to instead use the Y axis to define what order things should be rendered in rather than uh, uh, another ordering that was previously using. And so it's going to paint uh, from the top to the bottom. And so that's how these uh, 3D tiles are now rendering kind of over top and we get some actual depth there to work with. 
This also becomes important if you are working with scenes that are children of your tile map layer that are acting as tiles and not kind of as their own uh, scene collection in your tile set itself. And so if you have one that is kind of moving uh, amongst your tiles, you're going to run into some issues there and some of the rendering is going to look a little weird. If you're seeing that, chances are you're going to need that Y sort enabled. And that's it. If you've worked with square tile map layers before, you now have everything that you need in order to be able to work with hexagonal layouts or half offset square as well. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And you can check out my next video where I'm going to be covering how to interact with tile map layers using code. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.